Ladies and gentlemen, please put your tray tables and seat backs in their upright position, and in case of emergency, oxygen masks will drop down in front of you. Please pull the mask down towards your face and place the mask over your mouth and nose. If you're traveling with a small child, please attend to yourself first, then the child. Breathe normally and adjust the headband to suit yourself. We're going to talk about it on today's podcast. Hi, my name is Michael Johnson. I'm a ballroom dance professional, a life coach, and a peak performance expert. I'm part of a group of motivated people who are dedicated to attaining emotional mastery and unlocking our full potential. We've realized life is a dance. The ups and downs can spin you out of your mind, but it's time to take back control. It's time to become a lifer. We don't believe others are responsible for how we feel. In fact, we don't believe anyone can make us feel anything. We are a new breed of overachievers. Emotional mastery is our journey, and unlocking our full potential is the key. Welcome to the journey. We are lifers, and this is Magic for Life. What's up, everybody? Michael Johnson here with the Magic for Life podcast, and I'm so glad you joined me here today. And I hope I caught your attention, right? We've all heard that. In fact, we've probably heard it too many times as we've flown through the country to another place, Europe, wherever you've gone, right? We've all heard it on the airplanes, and they say it in lots of funny ways. I, I particularly like the uh, the uh, comical ones from, uh, I believe it's Southwest, right? Anyway, lots of uh, uh, airline attendants are having to say that because it's part of the emergency procedures. Now, one of the things that I wanted to bring up here is that they tell you to put the oxygen mask on first, right? And I bet some of you out there have had an experience. So I'm going to kind of backtrack for a second. And then we'll talk about that in a moment. <clears throat> but I bet some of you have had an experience in your life where you felt like you've cared about somebody else or something else so much. You put your heart and your soul into it. You gave all your time to that thing, that cause, that person, and it just wasn't reciprocated. And you just felt like, are you kidding me? Right? And it's not like we initially did it to get something back from it, but they just sort of blew it off like it didn't mean anything. And that's so rough, right? Because we want to be recognized and we want to be uh, paid attention to. We want to be known that we exist on this planet, on this world of ours, and that we're contributing. And there is something really powerful about connection and contribution. Now, if we dig into this a little bit and we go back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, he talked about needing to provide for shelter, air, water, food, uh, and all the basic needs first. And then as you move up Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's a triangle. And so if you want, you can look that up. It's on Google everywhere. Uh, But as you move up the uh, triangle of the hierarchy of needs, you get into the six human needs that Anthony Robbins talks about. In fact, I think it's one of the highest uh, watched TED Talks ever. So you can look that up. Anthony Robbins is amazing. And uh, you can check out that pod or that uh, TED talk. It's really great. Uh, but he does talk about the six human needs. And in the six human needs, of course, we have to take care of certainty and variety first, and then love and significance, and then growth and contribution. And that is one of those things that if you don't have shelter, water, air, food, all of those things taken care of, thinking about contribution is a little rough. Because how can you actually think about contributing to somebody else when you are starving for air, right? Now, let's kick this back to our intro and talking about the safety warnings when it comes to uh, flying an airplane. Now, a lot of times we can sit there on an airplane and as they give you safety warnings, they uh, tell you, oh, you need to do this and you need to do that. And when you've flown a lot, you tend to ignore it and just kind of move right along, right? But they do always tell you to put your oxygen mask on first, especially if you're traveling with small children or if somebody that might need assistance, you need to put your oxygen mask on first. So uh, I was looking it up and and the other day a video came uh, over my YouTube feed and I thought I'd share that with you. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I'll put the link underneath. And if you're listening to this on the podcast on iTunes or Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you're listening to it, we'll put the uh, link to the YouTube video in the comments. But this is a great little video. And uh, it just describes the science behind putting your oxygen mask on first. In fact, it talks about what happens at uh, different 
uh, levels away from sea level where you lose oxygen, right? The oxygen in the air thins out and there's not as much oxygen for you to take in for your brain. And this thing happens and it's scientific and it's called hypoxia. Hypoxia is interesting because what happens is you seemingly think you are functioning the same way, but as you'll see in this cool little video that, uh, that they did, go, go check out the channel. It's really cool. They talk about all sorts of cool things. And, uh, and uh, in this particular one, they go into this chamber. It's, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's a hyperbolic chamber or I might be thinking of something different, but it's a chamber that they uh, depressurize. And then they slowly uh, make you feel as though you were at 25,000 feet. And that's what they did it at in this video, in this experiment. And they show, uh, the host of this shows himself uh, taking off the oxygen mask. And they just do a simple action like putting toys, the little shape toys into the shape box. You know, something you learn when you were in second grade or first grade. And uh, as they do this, he shows when he has the oxygen on that he's totally fine. And when he has oxygen, he's totally fine. And very quickly, he goes from being able to recognize the shape, put it in the hole, to not being able to put the shape in the hole and identify the shape, to not even being able to function with the shape, to the point where the control, the guy on the outside of the chamber says, put your oxygen mask on now or you're going to die. And he says, I don't want to die, but he's just frozen and he can't move. He no longer, he's like paralyzed, but he looks like he's alert and he looks like everything's okay, but he just, he just is frozen. And so the uh, instructor tells one of the assistants to get the oxygen back on and within seconds, he's totally fine again. And this is huge, right? When you're on an airplane and you're flying, they were doing this experiment at 25,000 feet. They then pointed out that when you fly commercially, you fly at 35,000 feet. 10,000 feet higher. So uh, in that altitude, he had about two, three, three minutes, I think, before he could have actually died without the oxygen. At 35,000 feet, they say it's, well, it's less than that. <laughs> so <laughs> less than, it's, it's seconds that you have to actually take care of this and get the oxygen mask on yourself. And so part of the reason that they tell you to put the oxygen mask on you first is because you can literally lose it that fast and you, you absolutely lose uh, cognition and you cannot function, literally cannot function. Uh, and there's just not enough oxygen going to the brain. And so taking care of yourself first and then getting it over your kids is primary because obviously without you there, your children are going to be in worse shape. Now, how does this apply to our metaphor? Like so many times, or how does this metaphor and this example of our, our real life experience, how does it apply to our life? Well, so many times we want to help and contribute. And so many times we want to participate in, in charity and in being able to help others. And I think that it's fabulous and we should and contribution is one of the highest forms of connection and uh, fulfillment that you can get right in the six human needs that Anthony Robbins talks about it is uh, one of the paradoxes with growth and contribution right because growth is all about you and and improving you and contribution is about taking it outward and, and doing something for other people and it's important that in order to get to the point where you can actually contribute and help other people that you have to take care of you. You have to get yourself in order. You have to get everything uh, situated because you have to be able to have the fortitude to be able to now give out. You have to be able to have the energy and the wherewithal, the consciousness, the self-awareness, the metacognition, right? If we want to take it a step further to be able to help and step outside of yourself and be able to give some of your energy and some of your resources to somebody else. But if you have no resources, there's nothing to give. One of my favorite mentors to listen to, uh, he has a saying, he says, uh, get rich, give back, right? And so a lot of people have negative connotations to rich people or to rich entities or corporations, but his uh, message is get rich and give back. And I love that, right? Because it's a, you, you've got to put the oxygen mask on first. I talk about emotions a lot and that's maybe how you found this channel and maybe how you found uh, me and magic for life. And 
emotions is kind of a thing I love to deal with. It's something I've uh, explored and researched and talked about a lot. And when you talk about emotions, so many times we forget to put the oxygen mask on ourselves first. Take care of your emotions. Use the correct tools. If you haven't listened to the, that podcast, go and listen to the podcast about using the proper tools. You have to have the right tools to run and use your emotions, the right tool for the right job. And that, in essence, is the right operating, emotional operating system to use for the right emotions, for the right situation. You must have the right tool for the right job. Put the oxygen mask on yourself. And so that's what I would encourage you guys to do today. I want you to think about where you're at, what's going on in your world. What emotions did you use today that you look back in hindsight and go, that was not the appropriate emotion to use for that. And how would I handle it better? What tool could I use better? You see, you can upgrade your emotional operating system. I can help you and I can show you that's why you're here, right? So you, you must do that. You must upgrade your emotional operating system so that you can use better tools so that you can execute your emotions better and use them in the right situation. When you can gain a better self-awareness, you'll be able to do that. Now, make sure you do it for you first. And so many times, it's easy to start looking outside. Outside, it's easier to see outside. It's much easier to see than to look at yourself. And that's the point of having a coach, right? We get coaches for everything. We get coaches for basketball. We get coaches for martial arts. We get coaches to learn how to paint or go to school or, or whatever it is we're uh, interested in. But it's easy to forget to get a coach for ourselves, to have somebody to help you be able to be aware from the outside in, from a meta perspective, to be able to help you uh, come to a place where you can use better tools to operate your emotional system. Anyway, don't forget if this helped you today and if, if hearing about this uh, resonated with you, maybe you know somebody else that uh, this would help change their lives. So make sure you like the video so we know that uh, you love the content and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and uh, the little shaky one that's there, the little notification bell in the corner. That's fun, right? And that way you'll know that we've put out some new content and you'll hear about it right away. Uh, but please share it with somebody else. Uh, just hit the share button and there's lots of different ways to share it. Share it with somebody else that might need to hear this today because we're out to change the world, right? We, we got to change the world. This is what we're doing. I want to help contribute in in any way I can. So please share the podcast. If you're on iTunes or Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you're listening to your podcast, please uh, take a screenshot and hashtag magic for life or uh, lifers for the win or something like that so that we know and let other people know, share it on social media and, and let's get this out there so that we can help some other people. That's a great way to contribute uh, from today moving forward and from today's podcast. So thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you on the next podcast. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey lifers, we expect upgrades to the base operating functions of the things like our phones, cars, and even refrigerators. Why then has it not been made a priority that we upgrade the operating systems of our emotional states? We dance around the subject of emotional mastery from a young age. We have so much more knowledge in today's world, yet we're still teaching outdated methods of emotional education, if any are being taught at all. It's time for a change. It's time for an upgrade to our emotional education. Let me help you learn how to do that. Pick up your free copy of Every Minute at everyminutebook.com.